I'd like to greet everybody again with another beautiful afternoon this uh, Thursday. And this is uh, July 8th, and I'd like to thank God that uh, we are already at this uh, part of the week, and uh, we're headed to the uh, weekend again. And i like to thank the Lord for constantly watching over us and uh, protecting us. And I hope that everything is uh, well with you and will continue to be so. And may the Lord be the one to protect us from this virus, keeping us safe every day. Praise God. So I'd like to remind everybody again, if you have testimonies, please share lang, take a video of yourself uh, for about five minutes and send it to us, okay, Sister Mackey, and then we will play your testimony in one of our uh, forthcoming services. Okay, let's go to our topic uh, right now. Last uh, time, last Monday, I started to talk to you about expecting a miracle from God in our lives. Every day as believers, as born-again believers, we should always believe uh, for the supernatural, that God will always move in our lives, that we will see His power displayed on a daily basis for us to see the hand of God always moving. Dapat araw-araw nag-expect tayo ng mga himala galing sa ating Panginoon. I'd like us to read our text. And uh, let's go to Psalm 77, 12 to 14. I will meditate on all your works and consider all your mighty deeds. Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. Let's uh, pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we are coming to you once again, and we pray that you will be with us as we get into your word. I pray that every heart will receive your word, use me under your power, and anointing, O God, and let me be able to uh, preach and teach this to your people with clarity of words. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's have a uh, little review of what we have discussed last time. I've talked to you about two points. First is why are we to expect a miracle from the Lord? And I gave you three things. First, we have uh, come to believe in a God who is alive. Our God is alive. He is not dead. He is always moving. He is always active. And uh, therefore, we can always uh, trust in Him. And each time this living God moves, it's always a miracle. Secondly, our God is a miracle working God. Just as uh, we have seen, dito sa verse 14, you are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the people. So our God is a God who performs uh, miracles. He is a God who works and produces miracles. Just like how He saved people or His people, the uh, Israelites from Egypt, and according to Moses in Deuteronomy 4.34, God took them out by miraculous signs and powers or wonders. Praise God. And thirdly, God is a God who wants to perform miracles in the sight of His people, right before their very eyes. Psalm 78 verse 12, He did miracles in the sight of of all of their fathers in the land of Egypt, in the region of Zoan. So please note that God performs miracles in the sight of His people. Meaning to say, whenever God performs miracles, He wants it to be done publicly. It's a public miracle always. God is never secretive about it. People will know uh, what God has done and should know what God has done. So if God does uh, perform a miracle uh, in your life, uh, please, what uh, kayo maging secretive? Nahiya ako. I don't want to tell anybody about this. You should testify because this is the will of God. He wants His name to be proclaimed forever. And then also I talk to you, when can we expect God for a miracle? And uh, the first point that I've laid down is that in all honesty, we do not expect 
a miracle when everything is going right in our lives. When everything is fine, when everything is going well. And I tell you, most minds of the people, especially sinners, they don't have God uh, in them. And so they do not uh, believe God. They uh, do not uh, ex expect God because everything is well. And they claim the whole thing for themselves. And Christians at times are not exempted. Dahil we forget about God when we receive blessings. And that's why it says Deuteronomy 18 verse 8, we are warned that we are not uh, to forget our God, but we will always remember Him in a time of prosperity. So our greatest need for a miracle is when we are in need. Like David in Psalm 70 verse uh, 5, when I am poor and needy, uh, yet I am poor and needy, come quickly to me. You are my help, my deliverer, O, o Lord, do not delay. Psalm 86 verse 1, Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. So our needs will uh, cause us to cry out to God for a miracle. So let's uh, move on. And I told you that uh, we will talk about how can we expect miracles uh, from God sa ating buhay. I got eight advices for you this time. And uh, I hope that uh, you will write this down and uh, you will uh, not forget them. But already I'm telling you, we will not be able to finish this. We will stop at uh, number four and we will continue uh, next Monday or this coming Monday uh, about the rest of uh, the uh, expectation. Okay, firstly... Make up your mind. Ayuhon ang imo panghuna-huna. What I mean by this is that make up your mind to believe God for miracles this year and always or every year. You've got to make up your mind. You have to say, I am a believer of, a, of God's miracle. I, I'm, I'm always convinced that God has a power and possesses all authority to perform miracles in uh, our lives. So don't let your mind be drawn by doubts or things of the world because there are no miracles when we doubt. Hindi tayo makakita ng Himala when we doubt. We will not see miracles if we are doubters. Only those who believe will be able to see the work of God the mighty hands of God being displayed among them because they trust in the power of God they believe. So this is something that we need to uh, always consider. Don't ever doubt and also no miracles will happen when our minds are usually set on the things of the world. How can you desire for a miracle? Your mind is too much into the world. You are always thinking of the world. You are not uh, considering uh, how God can rescue, can perform things, can uh, heal people. Kasi walang isip mo dito sa mga supernatural things or spiritual things. You are so much into the world. So obviously, you will not expect a miracle. Now let's go to uh, Paul's words. And I'm talking to you about making up your mind. For miracles, Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. So, very clear that we are to set, and that word set means to fix. You are to glue, you are to adhere your hearts and your minds to where you will see victory. Where is victory? Well, above. It's the place where Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. That's why Paul is specific about this. You got to set your mind on Christ. He is in heaven and seated where? At the right hand of God. And what he is doing there 
is that He is interceding for us. There is someone who is praying to the Father for us, for us to see miracles, for us to see answered prayers. So, dyan dapat nakatoon ang ating isip. Nakafocus sa atong panghuna-huna, diha sa langit, kung asa nakalingkod ang atong ginoong Jesus. Uh, right there, tapad sa right hand, sa amahan. Set your minds on things above, not, not on earthly things. So, miracles come from above. Miracles do not happen or take place or the earth is not the source. The world is never the source of miracles. Only God. So, nakaset up tayo ang atong mind on the things above, not on earthly things. Why? Because the God of miracles lives there. The God who is able to save lives there. He is able. He is always uh, powerful to save, to deliver, to bring about uh, miracles. Number two, ignite your passion for Jesus. Okay, you want to see a miracle? Well, ignite your passion for Jesus. Be in love with Jesus every time this year and the coming years and all the years of your life. Proverbs 8, 17. I love those who love me and those who uh, seek me what find me. Well, where can we see miracle here? Well, the last part, those who seek me find me. You know, finding Jesus is not simply finding him as a person, but you have found God. You have found him. The one who performs miracles. You have found him, uh, the one who knows uh, how to take care of all your needs. So everything is uh, nakafocus or coming from the Lord. Seek him. Pangitao nato si Jesus. Don't draw away from Jesus. But be in love with him forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. So, when you seek God, when you seek the Lord, you will definitely find Him. What do you need about God? That's why you're seeking Him. Do you need miracles? Do you need a satisfaction for your soul? Do you need uh, your hunger to be quenched? Do you need fellowship? Well, it's all in that package, seek me. Nadiha ang tanan, even ang mga miracles. So here, here is a famili- familiar verse, a very familiar verse that is commonly understood differently. Romans 8.28 And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Again, let's read it. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. So this is a verse that we are to understand in relations or connections a uh, miracle. It should uh, not be said just for us to uh, give relief. Katuli man tao, hi naku Lord. Anyway, all things work together for good. Instead of saying that in faith, we kind of, huh, okay, anyway, all things work together for good, more negative, ang uh, the thing, no. Uh, so we are not to be like this. But this scriptures gives us our assurance in a difficult uh, time. Firstly, what you notice here is that God will work in all things. God works. Stop lang tayo dun. So we find God working. And how does God work? He always performs miracles. He is always displaying his awesome need, uh, deeds. rather. So, he works. He works wonders. He works to uh, show us how mighty he is. So, this is something that uh, we have to know that in all things, God is not silent. God is not in a corner. He is always working. And he will work 
for your miracle. He will work to get things done. He will work to provide miraculous provision for you. Amen. So, secondly, God will work for those uh, for the good yana of those who love him. That's what God works. The good of those who love him. And that word good can actually be also translated as the best. Okay? God works for the best of those who love him. So, this is something for us to always see. To see good things is to see miracles. To see good things means uh, to see provision, to see healing, to see restoration. These are things that uh, we can expect from God. So, every bad thing will be replaced by every good and best thing. Why? Because again, there is a God in heaven who will work out for the best of those who, uh, who love Him or those whose passions are always ignited for Him. Because that word love can also be translated as uh, passion or great and eternal passion. So you got that passion and your passion before God is uh, always ignited and therefore... You will always see God working in your life. You will always see Him doing good things, doing the best for you. Thirdly, rearrange your life. What I mean is that rearrange your life and lifestyle for a miracle or miracles. Some of uh, the lifestyles that we have, they are not geared for miracles. In fact, to be honest, some are geared for hell and not heaven. Even Christians, their lives are geared uh, for hell. Some Christians are like that. They're living like sinners, okay? It, it should not be uh, the thing about uh, the way we live our lives. Dapat nakagear up tayo always for heaven. If we want to witness a miracle in our lives, then we are to be conforming to the miraculous. Our lives must conform to see the miraculous. Let's uh, see this verse, Psalm 68, verse 6. God sets the lonely in families. He leads forth the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. Notice there will not be any miracles for people who rebel. Those whose lives are geared for hell. Rebellion will cause us to live in a place where God does not live. Okay? Those who live in the rebellion are living their lives or spending their life in a, in a sun-scorched land. Meaning to say where it's dry, there's dryness. And there is deadness. So how can you see miracles when your life is sun-scorched? Uh, nasunog ng araw. And therefore, there will not be any miracle for people who rebel. For only for those who trust in God. Only for those who find their confidence in God. Now in contrast, this is what David said. Uh, Psalm 27, verse 11 and verse 13. 11, teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. And then verse 13, I am still confident of this, that I will see what? The goodness of the Lord or Jehovah in the land of the living. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So we must thirst for God in His presence we must rearrange our lives to pray and rearrange uh, things so that we can devote ourselves to reading the Word of God and miracles will be seen in you. But you got to be confident that you will see. I will see God. I will experience your goodness in the land of the living. And where goodness is, the goodness of God, you will see His power display. You will always witness His miraculous hand in the way you live your life, 
in your relationship with your wife or your husband or your, or your children in uh, your relationship with your parents that you are to really um, growing and knowing why miracles can happen to you because you are not a faithless individual you are a person convinced to see the goodness of God in the land of the living and in connection to that number four activate your faith okay activate your faith this is very important always if you want to see miracle you got to have faith okay like again psalm 27 13 i'm still confident of this i will see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living and that word confident in hebrew is tied up very much to faith i'm still confident i still have faith in god no matter what is going on in my life no matter how negative things are, I am still confident. I still have faith that I will see the goodness of God. So, activate your faith. Make your faith alive. Make your faith uh, operative. Okay? Functional. At hindi lang yung naka uh, standby, kumbaga, stagnant in one place. But your faith is always active. It's always working. So, faith is an important factor to receiving a miracle in our lives. We see this in Mark 11, 22 to 24. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but what? Believes. That's the key word. That what he says will happen and it will be done for him, not for others, but for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So Jesus laid down the truth. I tell you the truth. If anyone says, okay, that's the pronouncement of faith to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea. No doubt in the heart but you believe that what you uh, say will happen and it will be done for you. So this is something personal to a person uh, who has faith. Pero kung faithless ka, wala ka nagtuo sa imong uh, Diyos, well, you will not see any miracle. You will be like a rebellious kid or child or son or daughter and uh, you will be living in the sun's scorched land. But be, always believe, activate your faith. Because faith is believing in a God who is not limited, in a God who has all the power, and you are doing this without any shadows of doubt. Let's go to Jeremiah 32, 17. Jeremiah said, As sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power, in outstretched arm, nothing is too hard for you. I like this faith of Jeremiah. He recognizes here who God is. Lord, you're the maker of, he of the heavens. Esa, meaning to say the outstretched, uh, outstretched heaven, meaning to say the space. Okay, there, there is no limit uh, to the space. You mga nag... Uh, Nag-aaral na space and they're doing space exploration. Uh, they see the vastness of the universe. Walang end. So he made, God made the heavens as well as he made the earth. How? By his great power and his out, outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Okay, do you believe that nothing is too hard for your God? Do you have faith? That he can always move mountain in your life? Is this too hard for God to do? Is it too hard for God to perform miracle in your life? Or miracles in your life? So, always activate your faith. Why? Because faith activates God to move in our lives. 
mauna ang magpalihok sa atong ginoo, ang atong pagtuo kaniya. Okay? Faith activates God to move in our lives. It will cause Him to perform miracles for us so that all the barriers, all obstacles, all mountains are removed. Nothing is impossible for those who believe and for those who have faith. So, Matthew 17, 20, He replied, Because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move uh, from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be what? Impossible for you. Now, I, I want you to notice, Jesus didn't say nothing will be impossible for God. Now, it's for you, okay? You know the story uh, behind this, the disciples who were uh, down the valley, because Peter, James, and John were up on the mountain, like transfigure the Lord. And then while they were going down, there was this commotion. And there was a boy who was uh, heavily uh, possessed by a demon, and uh, his uh, disciples were not able to do so. Okay, and then Jesus simply cast out the demon uh, by his word. And when they were inside, they asked, why can't we do this? Oh, because naging, naging frank si Lord, you have little faith. Okay, if I tell you the, the truth, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to these mountains, move from here to there, and it will move. Parang, I want you to see here. You are not able to see this because you have little faith. Okay? And then, nagingun siya, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, then you can see, say to this mountain, move in, uh, this mountain will move. You know, a mustard seed is not really a big seed. It's a little seed. Okay? I, I so on. It's just a pinpoint Malit lang siya, tuldok lang halos siya. And parang contrast, I tell you the truth, uh, oh, because you have so little faith. And then, he is only requiring so small of a faith to move mountain. Uh, what is the point here? Well, they have little faith because they got so much doubt. Okay? That's why they were not able to perform the miracle. They have little faith dominated by so much doubt. But the faith Jesus is referring to is genuine faith. No doubt, only trusting in God, only believing in God. Bisan gamay or uh, too little ang uh, imong faith. Well, that will work out the miracle for you. Faith. Little faith, faith like a mustard seed without doubt, you can perform miracles. They got little faith because their faith had been dominated by doubt. Well, I hope that uh, you have picked up whatever the Lord would like you to receive at this time. So, I review lang nato all those uh, four points. Number one, how can we expect miracles in our lives? Make up your mind. Make up your mind to believe for miracles. Number two, ignite your passion for Jesus. Always fall in love with Jesus. Number three, rearrange your life. And lastly, activate your faith. So, uh, this coming Monday, uh, I will continue with uh, uh, part three of this. Okay, the rest of the four expectations, uh, I will uh, discuss them to you. So I hope that you have received the Word of God. Then um, please, always live a life that uh, no matter what is going on, you have confidence. And you are a person who is always expecting a miracle from your Father in Heaven. So have this lifestyle. Ignore your, I mean ignite, not ignore. Ignore the devil, but ignite your faith. Okay, because faith our faith activates God always. Amen? So let's go before the Lord in prayer. 
Hallelujah, mighty God, we want to thank you for the word that we have received once again this uh, Thursday. I pray that, Lord, you will display your mighty hand and that, God, every one of us will be expectant for a miracle every day of our lives. Then we will not doubt you that no matter what is going on in our lives, we can uh, be confident that we will see your goodness in the land of the living. Thank you, God. And bless your people always. We give you praise. We give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Praise God. So I hope that you have learned something. And uh, please continue to trust in God because He is always our help. Praise the Lord. So again, I remind lang na ko ang tanan that... Uh, uh, if you have testimonies, please keep sending your testimonies. Uh, take a video of yourself for about five minutes and send it uh, to us, to Sister Mackie particularly. And we will play your testimony on one of the Sunday services. Praise God. So, again, a uh, reminder na mahimutang faithful sa atong uh, paghatag sa tithes of offering. And kung wala pa mo nakahatag sa Thanksgiving, please do so. Plus, uh, be faithful with your vows and your pledges for Project Joshua. One of these days, I will be talking about it again sa platform on a Sunday so that we can be encouraged to believe that God can work out this miracle. And don't forget uh, to pray that God will give us 170 million. It's a big amount, but our God is greater than this. Amen? So, at this point, uh, we will go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, mag-enda po tayo. Lift up your hands once again. Abba God, we just want to thank you for this wonderful afternoon that you have given us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the word. And thank you, Lord God, that you are causing us to grow in our faith. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people to give their tithes, offerings, thanksgiving, and uh, their project, Joshua. Bless them like never before. We can never outgive you. Be with us this weekend. Continue to watch over us and protect us from uh, COVID-19 and uh, from fire. God, in the neighborhood, and uh, from earthquakes, oh God, and floodings, should there be heavy rains at night, keep your people safe and safe. And may Yehovah bless you and keep you. May Yehovah make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Yehovah lift up His countenance upon you and grant you His shalom both now and forever. Amen and amen. Well, praise God. Thank you very much for uh, being with me this afternoon. And please don't forget our service tomorrow night, Friday, and then on Sunday. So the Lord's blessings be upon us all. Shalom to everyone.